Hey, Blue Green Training, it's Dr. Johnson, the performance dietitian. I'm here today to talk about Nutrition Basics 101. As a registered dietitian with a PhD in Health and Human Performance, I know there can be a lot of misinformation out there on what's the best diet to perform at your peak. We're here to help you break that down. We're going to break it down to make it super simple, give you some practical tips, and how you can make slow changes over time. Don't be discouraged, and you don't have to overhaul your entire diet all at once. That can be really overwhelming, and that actually makes sustainable changes less likely. So we're going to take it one step at a time. We're going to choose one to two goals to try to implement, and these small changes over time make a really big impact. This big impact will ultimately help you perform at more peak levels as long as you're following your training program. So let's go through some of the basics of Nutrition 101. Like I said, there's a lot of misconfusion. Are eggs good? Are eggs bad? You should eat plant-based proteins. You should only eat animal proteins. Well, I'm here to kind of debunk all of that. Nutrition really is not that complicated, and there is a lot of evidence to support that a well-balanced diet can really help support your performance. What's more important, too, is making sure that you're actually eating enough calories and enough protein to help you recover from those really intense workouts And if you're trying to, let's say, manage your weight or you have a lighter training day to kind of reduce your overall calorie intake to make sure you're matching your personal goals. So when we look at our nutrition, nutrition can be classified really into two categories. We can think of macronutrients and micronutrients. I'm sure you have all heard of eat your macros or if it fits your macros. The problem when we focus only on macronutrients is that we miss out on a lot of key micronutrients, which really have a lot of evidence to help support your performance and recovery. So it really is a big picture of having appropriate macronutrients and micronutrients in your diets. So our macronutrients are your carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, where your micronutrients are vitamins, minerals, and water. Now, those two get classified that way because macronutrients are really large molecules and they also have calories or energy for your body, where micronutrients are really small molecules and they don't have any type of calorie in them, but they're very beneficial for our performance. We'll get into the nitty gritty of micronutrients later, and if you want to know specifics, you can check out the nutrition training guides to read more about which micronutrients can really help elevate your performance. Again, stay hydrated, and we could focus on choosing more nutrient-dense foods that have a lot of vitamins and minerals in them to not obsess over making sure that we're hitting every single micronutrient that's required on a daily basis. That can get very overwhelming. We're trying to hit the nutrition key basics one-on-one to get you started. So let's look at the macronutrients individually so you can have a better understanding of their specific roles how we classify those particular macronutrients, and then which macronutrients we should be selecting more or less of to help us perform our peak level, uh, whatever your personal goals are, whether you're trying to lose weight, whether you're trying to gain muscle, and then ultimately we're all trying to enhance our performance in order to get that goal we're trying to hit. So with macronutrients, we can look at carbs, protein, and fat. They all have a different role, and so we actually need all three macronutrients in our diet. Now, carbohydrates tend to get a really bad rep in our society. People think that carbs make us fat. We should be following a low-carbohydrate diet. But it really depends on what your particular goals are. And more importantly, as an endurance-based athlete, carbohydrates are extremely important to fuel your body. So carbohydrates are our dominant fueling source in our body. And carbohydrates can be really broken down into either complex carbohydrates or simple carbohydrates. Complex carbohydrates are more of your whole food carbohydrates. So think about whole grains, uh, whole fruits, whole vegetables. And simple carbohydrates are something along the lines of our sweets like cakes and cookies and sweetened beverages. And even your milk product is kind of in that simple carbohydrate. However, it is a little different just because milk has protein and fat in it as well. So it operates a little bit differently. But in general, easy rule of thumb, complex carbohydrates have fiber and simple carbohydrates do not have fiber. So when we're looking at our carbohydrate intake, we want the majority of our carbohydrates to come from complex carbohydrates. 
Uh, that's because they are more nutrient dense. So we talked about how nutrient dense foods have more vitamins, minerals, and fiber in them, which really can help with your performance recovery. Now, complex carbohydrates are what we should be consuming at our meals, but it's absolutely okay and beneficial to have a simple carbohydrate right before you work out, during your workout, if you're drinking some Gatorade, for example, because you want a little bit of that sugar to kind of keep your glycogen going. And then even post-workout, if you have a simple carbohydrate like chocolate milk, for example, it's one of the best recovery shakes that you can actually have because it has carbs, protein, and uh, minerals that are important for overall performance health. So when we look at carbohydrates, they're not bad. We need about 50% of our diet to come from carbohydrates exclusively. And if you are an athlete, endurance space more so, so you're doing a lot more running, a lot more rucking, you do need higher carbohydrate intake, typically around 65% to 75%, depending on how much endurance training you are doing. So easy, simple swaps that we can make with carbohydrates is trying to switch some of our simple carbohydrates to complex carbohydrates. So instead of drinking apple juice, eat the whole apple. Instead of choosing white rice, choose brown rice. Um, these are really simple tools that you can start to integrate into your daily diet to help boost your overall nutrient intake. And that nutrient density is going to help you feel better and fuel your body better. Again, just as a recap, carbohydrates are our dominant source of fuel that we get broken down into glucose. And then in addition, it's a way for us to replace our storage of glycogen, which is our stored glucose in the body. So when you are exercising, you have a readily available source of energy for your muscles. So carbohydrates are really important for recovery as well after those intense training sessions. Now, protein. Protein is probably the easiest macronutrient for people to identify with. And protein is really the building block for a lot of different functions in our body, but most knownly for its muscle mass, right? Our muscle in our body is protein, and it does require protein in our diet to help support and repair our muscle protein from exercise. If you are looking to add muscle mass to your overall body composition, you do need more calories and more protein in order to build more muscle inside the body. Now, protein is also important for building other products in our body, such as enzymes and such as hormones, and it helps with fluid balance as well. So protein does a lot more than just muscle mass. It really is a high functioning macronutrient in our body. And those amino acids are really important for a variety of different functions in our body. Now, proteins can be broken down into a complete protein or an incomplete protein. Now, animal protein, source proteins are your complete protein because they contain all nine of the essential amino acids, whereas your plant-based proteins have one or two limiting amino acids from those essential amino acids. And essential just means that your body does not have the ability to actually make that amino acid in the body. So when we're looking at protein, high quality protein tend to have more of your animal-based products. And so if you are somebody who does eat animal products, it is wise for you to choose mostly animal proteins that come from lean sources. I know that, you know, everybody loves bacon because it tastes really good. But if we can choose leaner proteins such as fish or chicken, uh, really lean cuts of beef, that's going to equip you the best with a really high quality protein. And don't forget that there are other sources of high quality proteins that are found in milk cottage cheese, and Greek yogurt to kind of switch it up a little bit from just your chicken and eggs. If you want to have plant-based sor source proteins, that's okay as well. You just want to keep in mind that you're going to need a little bit more of that plant-based protein in order to achieve your um, daily intake of your essential amino acids. And protein is, again, one of those macronutrients that we actually need less of than carbohydrates as an athlete, but a good kind of range is about 1.5 to 2 grams per kilogram of protein daily. So that's quite a bit of protein, so do your best to have protein at every mealtime as well as snack time. Some of those easy swaps that you can do is you can add in Greek yogurt into, let's say, a smoothie to boost the protein, or you can even add in a scoop of protein powder into an afternoon shake uh, to help you reach your daily protein goals. Again, really simple. We just want to focus on those high quality proteins that have a lot of the essential amino acids. And within that essential amino acid, we do have those branch chain amino acids, which help with our muscle repair and recovery, as well as helping stimulate muscle mass production. 
Now this last macronutrient category is our fats. So fats will not make you fat as long as you are eating within the limit. And fats are actually really important for helping your body optimize, specifically unsaturated fats or omega-3s. They have a lot of anti-inflammatory properties. So fats can get categorized into saturated fats, unsaturated fats, and trans fat. Now, saturated fat is going to be coming from your animal protein, so things like that delicious bacon or the fat on any type of chicken or beef in the marbling of the steak. And it also has coconut oil. So coconut oil is a source of saturated fat. Unsaturated fats are your nuts and your oils, so things like almonds or walnuts, olive oil and avocado oil are all going to be sources of unsaturated fat. And we also have fatty fish in that category too. So it's going to be very rich in omega-3s, specifically EPA and DHA. There is robust evidence that shows the importance of omega-3 consumption and really the benefit is coming from the EPA and the DHA. So it is recommended that you consume two servings of fatty fish per week. And if you're unable to achieve that, an omega-3 supplement is recommended, but make sure you choose a high quality supplement that has more EPA and DHA because that's where we're really getting the health benefit from those specific amino acids. I meant fatty acids. And finally, trans fat is basically when we've taken a unsaturated fat, so let's say vegetable oil, and we've turned it into a solid, which is then hydrogenated oil into margarine, for example. We want to stay away from trans fat as much as possible because that is going to uh, really impact our heart health. And a way to look for this is looking for the word hydrogenated oils or partially hydrogenated oils on the food label. So if you reduce highly processed foods, you're going to be kind of eliminate, eliminating that trans fat in general. So that's going to be a good healthy rule of thumb. So simple swaps that you can make in choosing healthier fat choices. Um, trim off the meat fat, right? Because that's going to be saturated fat. Try to cook with avocado oil. It has a higher uh, burning point. So that's going to be better for you than olive oil. Add olive oil to some dressings salad dressing or even a, a little tablespoon of it in your uh, smoothie is going to be really beneficial because it has that healthy omega-3 in it.